tonight on News 22. President Trump is delaying the closure of the U.S.-Mexico border. Marijuana possession has less penalty in New Mexico. And find out why people are afraid of needles. All that and more on News 22 Thursday. Serving Southern New Mexico, this is the award-winning KRWG-TV News 22, where news matters. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gabriel Chavez. And I'm Victoria Valderrama. A Las Cruces middle school principal is facing, facing criminal charges. 42-year-old Joel Aguilar was taken to the Doña Ana County uh, Jail yesterday. Aguilar was the principal at CM Middle School and charged with transportation and possession of child pornography. Las Cruces Public Schools spokesperson Samantha Lewis says Aguilar was immediately removed from his duties. We have no information that indicates that any student from the Las Cruces Public School District was involved. Uh, however, we are um, working closely with law enforcement as this remains an active investigation and we're not privy to all of the facts. Uh, due to the serious nature of these allegations, we will be conducting an internal investigation of our own. We have no information. He is scheduled to appear in court again on Tuesday. Kathleen Gardner has been appointed acting principal at ZM Middle School. She was most recently assistant principal at Oñate High School. Gadsden High School suffered from a major loss when a teen was struck and killed. On Wednesday, Alberto Romero was getting ready to leave for school when a speeding car hit him. He was rushed to University Hospital in El Paso before he passed away later in the day. Doña Ana Sheriff's deputies are investigating this as a vehicular homicide case with the suspect in custody. 21-year-old Oscar Ivan Anchando has been arrested. It is reported that he was driving at a high rate of speed and was trying to run another motorist off the road before he struck Romero. Romero was a sophomore on the Gadsden High School varsity baseball team and the team will be holding a memorial for Romero this Friday before they play against Alamogordo. It's been a dangerous few days on the New Mexico highways. Two fatal crashes are under investigation for unknown reasons leading to the accidents. The first crash occurred on March 31st on Interstate 40 west of Gallup. A Chrysler struck the rear end of a parked commercial motor vehicle in the construction zone and rolled. The passenger of the Chrysler was ejected and was pronounced deceased on the scene. Others involved in the accident sustained injuries and were transported to the hospital. The second fatal crash on April 3rd north of Socorro indicated the driver, for unknown reasons, left the roadway, went through a barbed wire fence and crashed. 59-year-old Jerry Ray Lisk was pronounced dead at the scene. Alcohol did not play a factor in both accidents. Well, today was really nice. It really was some cloudy skies, but Christian is next to tell us more on that. Thanks, Vicki. This is Christian Severino with your current conditions. Taking a look outside, skies are currently mostly cloudy with the temperature at 75 degrees. Winds coming in 9 miles per hour from the southwest. Humidity at 12% with dew point at 21. Finally, our barometer reads at 29.94 inches. Taking a look at the temperatures we did experience today, we did have a high of 79 degrees. Average this time of year at 75 degrees and a low of 48. Throwing it back to record temps, back in 1967, we did hit a record high of 89 degrees. And back in 1979, we did have a record low of 26 degrees. Now, we didn't experience any rainfall today, leaving our yearly precipitation at 0.63 inches. Now, I'll be back later, but for now, more news. President Donald Trump is delaying the closure of the U.S.-Mexico border for one year. President Trump stated that he is giving Mexico one year to halt the flow of drugs into the U.S. This follows the threat he made earlier in the week to close the border after a mass amount of migrants crossing into the U.S. illegally without the Mexican government trying to stop them. Mr. Well, you know, Mexico has been, Mexico has been uh, doing a very good job the last three or four days since we talked about closing the border, which is very real. Uh, but What's more real initially is tariffs on the cars coming in, a 25 percent tariff on the cars being made in Mexico coming in. You know, Mexico, prior to my becoming president, took close to 30 percent of our car business. Okay, that's a lot. That's the ambassador of Mexico says they are trying their best to work with the president's administration, though many people say that closing the border would do more harm than good to the U.S., especially in regards to the economy. 
as President Trump considers whether to shut down the U.S.-Mexico border, communities along the southern border are raising an alarm. Such a move could be economically devastating, Santiago Casado reports. Gustavo Ponce owns Ponce Produce Distribution in McAllen. His company receives fruits and vegetables imported from Mexico by land. Now he's preparing for a possible border shutdown. It's concerning because we not only depend on the produce coming in, but people's jobs depend on this business in the valley, Ponce says. Ponce's company imports chili peppers, tomatoes, cilantro, and lettuce from Mexico. It's then shipped out by truck to major cities in northern parts of the United States and Canada. I think closing down the border is not a very good idea, Ponce says. It's something that will create negative repercussions for our bottom line and for customers. There will be both less produce available and way more expensive in, even for the produce that are already in, in, the, in the market. South Texas College economist Teo Sepulveda says that automobile parts, machineries and even television sets assembled in Mexico won't be able to get through either, resulting in millions of dollars in losses. Sepulveda says that with the uncertainty of a border closure and a new free trade agreement still in limbo, it could all lead to less investments in commercial transportation and less produce orders hurting the Valley's economy. Customs and Border Protection's officers arrested a U.S. man for sexual abuse of a minor. On Tuesday afternoon, 46-year-old David Wayne Kane attempted to make entry at the Presidio Port of Entry. CBP officers received a warrant alert on the man, then arrested him. Or originated out of Marfa, Texas, with a bond set at $150,000. The suspect was taken into custody and turned over to the Presidio Police Department. <coughs> The Las, Cruces uh, the Las Cruces Police Department is trying to clean up the streets this month. The police, is, the police are planning on to conduct at least five sobriety checkpoints and two saturation patrols between April 4th and April 30th. Sobriety checkpoints and saturations are intended to, to reduce the, and eliminate the number of people who drive while intoxicated. Las Cruces Police encourage those who plan on drinking to have a designated driver for their transportation needs. Marijuana possessions charges now come with less penalty. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham signed a bill yesterday that allows the possession of up to half an ounce of marijuana to be a petty misdemeanor. The bill is also making the possession of drug paraphernalia a petty misdemeanor as well. The penalty on the, most, on the first offense would be a fine of up to $50. The provisions for this law will go into effect on July 1st. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham has signed into law a pay increase for New Mexico teachers. The law was signed into effect on Wednesday that would increase teacher pay from $36,000 to $40,000. This law will also increase the pay of other members of the education system by 6%. Other bills are in the works as well to help out with the public education, hoping to increase educational spending by 16%. A new career path is taking shape after a game-changing bill was signed. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham has signed a law making New Mexico the eighth state to allow dental therapists to practice in some or all settings. Dental therapists are licensed dental practitioners who work with dentist-led teams to provide care, similar to a physician's assistant. This bill will help provide care to nearly 900,000 New Mexicans who live in areas without enough dentists. One of the next steps will be for New Mexico universities to develop a degree program. President Trump appears to be walking back his threats to shut down the border, giving Mexico a warning instead. And several years later, we're still talking about Trump's tax returns, the, one that, the ones that haven't been released. CNN's Abby Phillip reports. Mexico President Trump retreating today on his threat to close the border with Mexico. We're going to give him a one-year warning, and if the drugs don't stop or largely stop, we're going to put tariffs on Mexico. Specifically, the president targeting the auto industry, which experts claim would be severely hurt by a border shutdown. The only thing frankly better but less drastic than closing the borders to tariff the cars coming in. And I will do it, just like you, you know I will do it. I don't play games. A total 180 from what President Trump warned would happen just a couple of days ago. The border is going to be closed. 
100 percent. And as Trump moves to defuse that controversy of his own making, House Democrats now heading straight for Trump's bottom line as they make their first move to obtain six years of the president's personal and business tax returns. We're under audit, despite what uh, people said. Until such time as I'm not under audit, I would not be inclined to do that. Thank you. But in a carefully crafted move, House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Richard Neal is not giving Trump the option to decide. Democrats are citing a part of the IRS code that gives certain congressional committees the right to request an individual's tax returns, potentially forcing a court battle with the administration. Ways and means requests under 6103 have never been denied. So let us, let's rise to a level of presidential in all of this. Show us the Mueller report, show us the tax returns. On Capitol Hill, Republicans warning that Democrats are trying to politicize the IRS. But I see political reasons for asking this, and I think that's wrong. But a recent poll shows 64 percent of Americans want Trump's returns released, a sentiment this Republican lawmaker shares. Well, I think that uh, every high-level politician should disclose their tax return. Go Mexico. And stay tuned, Christian. We'll be back with your national forecast. But first, find out why beef has a recall. More on that when News 22 continues. Hi, I'm Nora Show, Program Manager for CareWG. As part of National Poetry Month this April, CareWG has a poetic special in store for you. A Place to Stand tells the amazing story of how Jimmy Santiago Baca became a celebrated poet, novelist, and screenwriter. This special takes viewers into Jimmy's past and present to uncover how the power of the written word lifted him from the violence and pain that had defined his early life. Tune in Sunday, April 28th at 5 p.m. for A Place to Stand. Nature presents American Spring Live, a real-time adventure into the season that kicks off an exciting new year in the natural world. We'll join scientists as they make discoveries about how longer days and warming temperatures trigger big changes in animals and plants. From Yosemite to the Everglades, spring is coming to you live on PBS. Welcome back, you're watching News 22 Thursday. Where news matters. A major recall is in effect for ready-to-eat beef patties by Advanced Pure Foods. The patties were in production last year and distributed to schools nationwide. Many reports have been made about finding purple plastic in the packaging of the patties. The patties were not, were not part of a nationwide school luncheon program. So far, no illness or injury have been reported. A new study finds a poor diet is responsible for deaths worldwide than any other cause. Researchers analyzed global diets looking at risk factors and their impact on death. They found poor diets killed more people than tobacco smoking or high blood pressure. The study says the problem isn't just that people are choosing unhealthy options. The real problem is that people are consuming high levels of salt and not eating enough healthy foods. In fact, researchers found more than half of all global diet-related deaths in 2017 were due to eating too much salt, not enough whole grains, and not enough fruit. In an effort to push good health in Las Cruces, the New Mexico Office of Border Health and New Mexico Women, Infants, and Children will host the sixth annual Spring Into Good Health event. The event will take place tomorrow at, from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Las Cruces Central Public Health Office. The event will include um, ways to stay active and eat healthy. Anyone between the ages of 0 to 64 can get their blood pressure and blood glucose checked for no cost. The event is free and open to the public. Vaccinations are a hot topic of late and no matter where you stand on the issue it's likely that you or someone you know hates going to the doctor. It's even more likely that the reason is a fear of shots. Mary Maloney explains. 
Do you get anxious, nervous, nearly pass out, even faint when confronted with getting a shot at the doctor's office? Then you may have needle phobia. A study reported by the U.S. National Library of Medicine says up to 50% of children exhibit needle fear. That phobia comes from a very specific experience when they were four to six years old. And for most people, it's when all of the booster shots were clustered on the same day. You've got a three-year period for the booster vaccines. And so in compliance with the CDC guidelines, you could stagger them out, you can space them. Dr. Amy Baxter of Pain Care Labs in Atlanta says a fear of needles and injections is often the reason adults decline vaccines and even avoid getting medical care altogether. We did research and found that the kids who had four or five injections on the same day, only in these booster areas, they were the ones who had high needle phobia five years later, and they were the ones who decided not to start their HPV vaccine. And it turns out that only three to five percent of people are born with a physical reaction to needles. Needle phobia may decrease with age, but Dr. Baxter says the best way to get over it is by conditioning yourself with positive experiences at the doctor's office. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mary Maloney. So it has been a really nice couple of days, but I wonder what the rest of the country is looking like. I'm wondering that too. Christian's up next with your national forecast. Taking a look at our national forecast now in my first map, we'll look at heat here in the southwest United States. Now we will soon be experiencing the hottest temperatures of 2019 so far, including Los Angeles, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, Phoenix, Arizona, and even here in El Paso, Texas, and us here in the borderland. Temperatures will spike up to the high 90s and even some low hundreds. Now in my next map, we'll take a look at storms in the northeast United States. A strong storm system is moving into this area due to this low pressure system making its way through the region, affecting cities such as Chicago, Louisville, and Detroit. Now, as we move up north, they will be experiencing more icy conditions and finally some snow in these areas as well. Now, in my last map, we'll take a look at the outlook for the United States as a whole. Now, as we can see here, Houston and St. Louis will be experiencing some thunderstorms with up north in Fargo, they will be experiencing some rain. Now, finally, here in Myrtle Beach and New York, they will be experiencing some more mild conditions. Now, on the other hand, in Phoenix and in the southwest United States, they'll be experiencing more warm and hot conditions. Now, finally, in the northwest United States, they'll be experiencing some showers as well. Now that's all I have for your national forecast. I'll be right back right after this break with your local temperatures. For now, you're watching News 22 on Thursday. Here and now, NPR News Middays. Weekday afternoons from noon to 2 on 90.7 FM and streaming live on krwg.org. Now serving at the American Wood Shop. It's a party and you're invited. This is a show all about how to take pallet wood and build either a portable bar or... Or a beautiful love seat. It's easy to do. Just watch the show. Saturday morning at 8.30... Coming up on Austin City Limits. Saturday at 9 p.m. Welcome back, you're watching News 22. Taking a look at temperatures right now in New Mexico, Farmington at 64 degrees, Santa Fe at 61 degrees, Clovis at a warmer 73 degrees, Ridoso at 64 degrees, Roswell 78, Las Cruces 76, and finally Deming at 73 degrees. Expected temperatures for tomorrow, Gallup at 63, Albuquerque 68 degrees, Socorro at 73 degrees, Las Cruces at 78, and Deming at 74 as well. 
Now moving into our neighboring cities, Alamogordo is expected to have clear skies this evening with a low of 49 and a high of 75 tomorrow. Truth or consequences, clear skies this evening, low of 45, partly cloudy skies tomorrow with a high of 76. Silver City, clear skies as well with a low of 38 and a high of 65 with partly cloudy skies. Now finally here in Las Cruces, clear skies throughout tomorrow with a low of 48 and a high of 78. Now I'll be back later with your five day forecast. For now, more news. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice will no longer allow spiritual advisors to be present with death row inmates while they are being executed. It's all because of a decision by the U.S. Supreme Court. Here's Adan Cortez with today's Southwest Minute. Chaplains, ministers, and spiritual advisors of all faiths are now banned from the Texas Death Chamber. They will be allowed only in the neighboring witness rooms. The move comes after the state said it could not supply a Buddhist priest. The Supreme Court said if other faiths were allowed, then a Buddhist should also be allowed. So, the state decided to keep all spiritual advisors out. Researchers at Colorado State University are forecasting a slightly below normal Atlantic hurricane season. They anticipate five hurricanes this year, two of them at Category 3 or higher. Last year, there were eight hurricanes and two developed into major storms. The murder of rapper Nipsey Hussle is affecting fans everywhere. Artist Corey Payne of Hartford, Connecticut created this street mural at the Heavens Skate Park. Hustle was shot and killed Sunday outside the clothing store he founded in South Los Angeles. The suspect is held on a $7 million bond. With a Southwest Minute, I'm Adon Contreras. Tuesday was a big day for our uh, ladies' women's softball team. I heard that Claire Cabello's up next with sports. Thanks, Vicki and Gabe. Coming up in sports, find out where the women's tennis team is headed this week. Don't go too far. We'll be right back with News 22 Sports. This week on Central Texas Gardener, Susan Morrison, a California designer and author of The Less is More Garden, rounds up big ideas for small yards. On tour in Georgetown, a modern cottage-style design attracts wildlife and stock takes keep the kitchen loaded. Daphne answers your top question, and Sean has your backyard basics tip. So let's get growing. Saturday at 2 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. When I heard that the love of my life, my partner, had Alzheimer's, it took me by such surprise. We know that two-thirds of caregivers are women. She's not who she was, and I try to do everything I can to try to make her who she was, and it doesn't work. I'm Dr. Peter Salgo. Join us this week for Second Opinion. Sunday at 1.30 p.m. This is KRWG-TV News 22 Sports. Welcome back. I'm Claire Cabello, and let's talk sports. NMSU is getting ready to host Utah Valley tomorrow. The Aggies will take on their fellow Western Athletic Conference opponents at 6 p.m. at the New Mexico State Softball Complex. They will then take on the Wolverines in a doubleheader on Saturday, which will start at 4 p.m. Fans that aren't able to make it to the game can watch it live on the WAC Digital Network. The Aggies' next game will be on the road against California Baptist on April 12th. The women's tennis team is headed to the Windy City to compete in the final WAC matches hosted by Chicago State. The women will first face off Seattle U, who have a record of 5-12 on Friday at 9 a.m. The Aggies will then play Chicago State, who are entering the tournament with a record of 7-9. The team's next match will be at home, where they will play tribute to their two seniors, Lindsey Harless and Yadira Ribeiro, on Tuesday, April 9th. The NCAA Final Four is this weekend. On Saturday, the first game will be at 4.09 p.m. between Auburn, the number five seed, and Virginia, the number one seed. The second game will be at 6.49 p.m. between the number three seed Texas Tech and the number two seed Michigan. The winners of both of those games will face off on Monday in the NCAA Championship at 7 p.m. Today's play of the day comes from the NBA. Minnesota Timberwolves player Carl Anthony Towns destroyed the rim on this monster dunk. The seven-foot tall center received an assist by guard Tyus Jones, then dribbled hard down the paint for a strong one-handed dunk to give his team an additional two points. The Timberwolves won by two points with the final score of 110 to 108. 
And that's all for sports tonight. Join us for more sports action next week. Still ahead in News 22, Christian will be back to take a look at your five-day forecast. But first, find out why restaurants are offering tasty specials. More on that when News 22 returns. You said this illness runs in families. Could I have given this to my children? I've been chosen to run for election. Congratulations, Mrs. Buckle. It's politics, Vi. If I didn't know better, I'd be thinking that you weren't behind me. Sunday at 7 p.m. On the next Makers. Girls couldn't be asked us because they wouldn't let us fly jets or be in the military. Women defy gravity and conquer space. At T-minus six seconds, the engine's light. You know you're going. Makers, Women in Space, Sunday at 11 p.m. Next time on Startup, we head to Kansas City, Missouri to meet up with Eric and Jody DeLeon, the founders of The DeLeon. Here's the lease price we're asking for. It was almost triple Wow. what we were paying. We counter-offered with $15,000 a month, and they said, you're not even close. And so we had to walk away. We had to build all of it. Take a leap of faith. And if you fail, pick back up and do it again. Be sure to join us next time on Startup. Sunday at 2.30 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. Let's take a look at our top stories. President Donald Trump is delaying the closure of the Mexican border for one year. The deal is he hopes to see a halt in the flow of drugs in the United States. A bill in New Mexico has been signed that allows the U.S. to allows half an Half an ounce of marijuana to be a petty misdemeanor. The penalty for first offenses would be a fine of $50. Needle phobia is a real thing that people experience when going to the doctor. As Mary Maloney investigates, this phobia can be cured by positive doctor visits. Burrito lovers are having a ball today. It's National Burrito Day. Restaurants like Chipotle, Moe's, Del Taco, and more are featuring tasty specials to celebrate. National Burrito Day is observed every year on the first Thursday in April. You can set up your own burrito bar at home or go out and enjoy one that's foolproof. Even burritos in a bowl are hugely popular. Be sure to add some chips and salsa to make it even better. That's great. I know where I'm going after this. <laughs> so Christian, what's the five day look like? Um, in the upcoming five days, it's going to be a warmer week. Um, hitting the 90s at the end in Tuesday, but for all, but for now, that's not much else. Awesome, good news. And that's all for News 22 Thursday. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. I'm Victoria Valderrama. I'm Gabriel Chavez. I'm Christian Serrano. Good, good night. night. Espanol is brought to you by Noticias 22, Spanish language news for Southern New Mexico and West Texas. Noticias 22. Bienvenidos a este breve informativo de Noticias 22. Con ustedes, Brian Ochoa. Los detectives del condado de Doñana identificaron a Oscar Iván Anchondo, de 21 años, responsable del accidente del joven Adalberto Romero, de 16 años, que murió ayer por la mañana en Verino, Nuevo México. Según los investigadores, Romero intentaba subirse a su vehículo cuando fue impactado. El choque provocó que Romero fuera arrojado a la carretera donde fue golpeado por Anchondo. Según informes, Anchondo había estado conduciendo a alta velocidad antes del incidente. Según los informes, Anchondo no se detuvo después de que impactó a Romero. Los, ag los agentes localizaron poco después del incidente cerca de su casa en Verino. La ambulancia transportó a Romero al Centro Médico Universitario en El Paso, donde murió antes del mediodía. Anchondo fue arrestado y acusado de homicidio vehicular y por abandonar la escena. Actualmente se encuentra en el centro de detención del condado de Doñana sin fianza. El director de CIA Merosco en las cruces está enfrentando cargos penales en la corte hoy. Joel Aguilar, de 42 años, fue llevado a la cárcel del condado de Doñana ayer por <coughs> el transporte y la posesión de pornografía infantil. <coughs> Cada cargo lleva una sentencia máxima de hasta 20 años en prisión. Aguilar está programado para aparecer en la corte el próximo martes. Para Noticias 22, Brian Ochoa.